Hello everybody, we are back again today with another World Machine tutorial. Today we will be going over some basic mountain shapes and how to make these erosion lines seem far more prettier than you could usually get them. So to start out, I'm just going to let you guys know that from now on, all of the content that I make now, I will have a download for the World Machine file so you guys could follow along with me and you can still see all the settings that I have without having to pause the video. So let's get right into it. So before we get into anything, I'm just going to let you guys know that I'm still using the settings that I used in the last episode. So this tutorial will be fully functional with the free version of World Machine. Uh, I'm probably only going to do like two more episodes that continue with this because really the free version isn't that good with making maps. I mean, you can really only do the simplistics with World Machine. But let's jump right into it. So to start out, I'm just going to use a simple layout generator found in the generator tab. Now what these do is it allows you to draw a path for the devices afterwards to follow. So if you just double click the layout generator, it'll take you to the layout view tab found up here. Now for the mountain, what we're going to use is a line. So all you got to do is click it here and you just want to draw the path that you want the mountain to follow. Now you can do anything of course, I'm just going to do a simple S shape. So if you take a look at it here, you can see that it, it, it's still pretty smooth. So the great thing about the layout generator is that if you go over here, you can see that there's a breakup feature. Now, you can use this however you want, but I found that the best options to work with this is at a roughness of 6 and a breakup scale of 3. And if you look at it, it adds a lot more breakup to the mountain. And this will help you once you get your erosion into it. So, like I said, the, the basic mountain shapes, you really don't need to do much other than erode it. Of course, there's some other stuff you can do and we'll get into that. But what you want to do is you want to start out with erosion. Because this will help you decide what else you need to do before you actually export the map. So, I'm going to use a bit more of this geological time enhancement because this gives you some really deep flow maps that allow you to edit it later on. So if you look in over here, you can tell that this is really eroded and that the peaks are really, really high. And of course this works fine, but the shape that I really want is more of a, a curved top. So what we can do is get out a clamp. And if we just pop this in right here, what the clamp does is it has three different options. What these options can do is it can raise the terrain or lower it based on what you specify through the clamp. If you go to the clip, it'll clip the terrain to the height that you specify. So you could raise or lower the section of terrain below it. The expand is a bit confusing, but if you look at it in the view, you could really tell for yourself what it does. It kind of just removes or adds terrain. But what we want to do is just make it a little bit on the top where it flattens out because of the height limit. And if you look back at the erosion after doing this, you can see that the tops, uh, the peaks of the terrain are far more defined. So once you render this out, it's going to take a few seconds because the layout generator and erosion are really resource intensive for some reason. I'm not sure why, but the layout generator, although it seems pretty simple, is still kind of heavy. But we'll let that render out. And once you get into this, you can see that, yeah, it, it does look like a mountain, but you really have it go down really shallow. And if you want just a mountain, yeah, that's fine. But mountains don't just drop off into an ocean basin all the time. So this is where combiners come in really well. So what the combiner will do, I, I kind of gave a simple rundown last episode, is you can take two sections of terrain and add them or subtract them together. So what this will allow us to do is put an area down here so it doesn't always reach to the bottom. So to do that, we're just going to take a simple advanced purlin and just edit a little bit to where it's a bit flatter 
via the steepness. And all you want to do is just drag it into the other input of the combiner. So from the start, this the combiner is averaging the terrain. So it'll take one of the two and just sort of average it. The combiner has tons of different features that you can mess with. I'm not going to explain them all right now, but the one that I typically use is the max. But if you look at it, it kind of, it just puts the terrain into the other terrain. Now this is, can be good in some cases, but for now it, it doesn't really give you a smooth transition. So we're going to use the screen and what that does is it uses a max like thing, but it overlays it on the terrain to make a smoother preview. So if you render the terrain out now, you'll see that the, the depth of the terrain isn't too far now. So while it takes away some height, it makes it far more natural. Now, of course, this is perfectly fine for your terrain and you could stick to this, but I don't really like the smoothness of the entire terrain. So we're going to take this one step further and using another clamp, we're going to add the terrain to here. And if you look on every single device, there's a purple box here. What these are are mask inputs and it does as it says, you could take something from another device, mask it into the terrain or into the uh, device and whatever that device does, it'll only do what it is doing where you define it. So what we can do is take the flow map from the clamp or from the erosion and put it into the clamp. And we're going to clamp it down just a tiny little bit on the mountain. And as you can see, it took where the flows are and is over amplifying them to make it a lot more smoother on the flow maps, but making it more rigid along the, the mountain itself. So that's pretty much it. Now, there's tons of other stuff you can do, of course, and there's a lot of other effects that we can add, but this alone should, it, it's a very nice start for something that is very simple. So for now, we're just going to leave it at this. And next episode, we're going to go into exporting and coloring the terrain to make it look well in Minecraft. And then we'll move on from there and go into some far more advanced stuff. So thank you for watching everyone. I will get more out as soon as possible and yeah.